and welcome to my channel. This is my friend, Pat Butcher. <laughs> and this is a segment that we like to call the Gaggle Chats. This is where my friend Jolie is going to come round and talk about all things feminism to the people on the internet. We're going to chat. We're going to chat. Come on, trolls. Now, this video is called Feminist Myths. <laughs> yeah. Jolie and I are both obviously feminists. We call ourselves feminists. We are out and proud feminists. So what does feminism mean to you? Um, so to me, it is all about um, dismantling the oppression which has been caused by the patriarchal society as we know it and letting people um, live their lives however they want and to be who they really want to be. What yeah. about you, Megan? I mean, I was saying this earlier that I would probably just go straight for the, like, Chimamanda definition. So just the social, political, economical equality of sexes. Come on, Beyonce! We flawless. Mm, I work up like this. I found feminism properly um, a few years ago, so when I was like 21, 22, and it was the same time that I found the body positive community and read The Beauty Myth by Naomi Wolf for the first time. And it just kind of made the world make sense to me. Mm -hmm. All of my experiences, they suddenly made sense. It made me realize why I hated my body for so long. It made me realize why I was trying to live up to the cultural standards that I was, um, standards of beauty, standards of femininity. It made everything make sense. It's like, click. Patriarchy, yeah, yeah that's oh, why. Yeah, oh, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah that's, that's oh, why. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was about 17 and it was when I was in sixth form. Not that it was like widespread trendy, but it was trendy within my group to be like, you know, like forward. You know, we were like the misfits. It's like that kind of period where everyone's experimenting and finding themselves. And I was like, I'm a feminist. So I shaved off all my hair and wore combat boots every day. Like every day. Even in summer. It was sweaty. <laughs> I got athlete's foot. <laughs> That's true. Gross. Yeah, I know. When I first started like, identifying the feminism, really it was all about the issues which affected me. So it was um, white feminism. Obviously, that doesn't mean white people who are feminists. You explain it better than me. Okay, so when people talk about white feminism, what they mean is feminism that isn't intersectional. Uh, that doesn't consider other issues like uh, racism, ableism, ageism, colorism, homophobia, transphobia, etc. And fatphobia. Really, fatphobia. White feminism only focuses on issues that generally affect white cisgender middle class women. Uh, and I think it's. A, that's the kind of feminism that a lot of us first find um, and, well, for us first identify with. Yeah, because it's accessible. It got me in the door. Intersectional feminism is what all feminism should be. And when we talk about intersectional feminism, we mean recognizing that oppression is different for everyone. And depending on who you are, you will have different layers of oppression. For example, the sexism that we face mm -hmm. is not the same as the sexism that also contains, for example, racism and transphobia that a transgender woman of color would face. Yeah. The, there are more intersections of their identity that mean that the oppression is different. If your feminism ain't intersectional, your feminism ain't shit. I love saying that. Or I would say that you just need to like learn more yeah you're much <laughs> nicer than me <laughs> i mean every, everyone everyone starts somewhere like you said everyone comes in the door somewhere so we both know what feminism is yeah but being a feminist on the internet we get told pretty much every day what other people think feminism is yeah all the um, and how horrible and awful it is so we thought for this segment what we could do is take what those people say and call bullshit 100 percent buster Feminist myth number one. All feminists have hairy legs. Well, personally I do. Um, and the reason I'm comfortable with my hairy legs is definitely to do with feminism because I don't feel like I have to shave them anymore. But originally the reason I 
didn't shave them is actually completely because I've got really sensitive skin and I'm lazy really that's mostly it things like body hair the it is an aspect of feminism that it's a choice you do to your body what you want to do you don't listen to what societal expectations are we also have to acknowledge that it's different for different people you know Jolie the blondest you what usually very blonde super blonde hair her choosing not to shave her legs is going to be different from for example a transgender woman who has to be passing in society choosing yeah. not to shave their legs or her legs or someone so, so people from different cultures um who perhaps her or, or different races who grow particularly thick hair and within their culture and society they're shamed for their body hair like hair bleaching and things like that is extremely popular um because they're made to feel that if they were their natural hairy selves then they are unattractive or um, you know undesirable and things like that so it's very different for someone like me who's got just a, li a light spattering of mossy hair <laughs> mossy mossy i am hairy all over by the way like i've got peach fuzz on my face and my back and my tummy and my boobs i know i love it it's my favorite part <laughs> so basically the answer is some feminists have hairy legs some feminists don't have hairy legs and also you can be a feminist and choose to shave your legs just because you like having smooth legs um, it's completely your decision so in the same kind of context we obviously also have that feminists don't wear makeup don't care about their appearance like don't look feminine that kind of thing yeah when I say that I'm a feminist people are generally quite shocked if I'm out like ah, ah you know if I'm not like going ah, ah most people won't know what that means Will they? On the town. Going out on the town to hitting up the club. I will wear a full face of makeup um, and people often find it quite shocking that then I d identify as a feminist because they seem to think that I'm not going to care about my appearance. When I do my makeup it's because I like the ritual, I like looking at myself that's mainly yeah, i really enjoy looking at myself and i feel like this is a topic that has been like done to death basically mm. in that feminists can wear makeup you can enjoy makeup it can be a passion of yours you can have it as a creative outlet that's fine um i also like i talk quite a lot about not having to wear makeup to feel like you're good enough and to feel like you're worthy of being seen uh, just because that's something that i still personally struggle with and i am still personally coming to terms with uh my bare face without makeup in today's culture where it seems like having a full face all the time is more and more expected but as feminists you can do whatever the fuck you want to your own face it's your face feminist myth number two feminists hate men <laughs> it's true that was your evil man hating laugh. <laughs> yeah, I put that out all the time. I personally don't hate men. I like them very much. As a straight woman, obviously I don't hate men. I very much enjoy them. I don't hate men, but I've only ever been accused of hating men as a way to shut down whatever I was talking about. Uh, and they don't engage with the actual topic that you're talking about. They just yeah. say, oh, well, obviously you hate men. I don't. <laughs> or they don't do that all the time. So you could be talking about like um, the availability of like contraception. People are like, why do you hate men? I'm like, yeah. no, I just want to go go on the pill. Yeah, I think this is the issue. If you talk about women's issues, people will think that you're against men. Like that's not the case. You can talk about one thing without being against the other thing. The like feminist hate men argument is the easiest way to shut down individual feminists who are talking about these issues rather than actually think about the wider context because the patriarchy is the issue the fact that we live in a patriarchal society where men have been put on a pedestal put on a pedestal basically society has been made with men in mind when you think about yes yeah, social issues economical issues uh, political issues we live in a patriarchal society so challenging that can easily be construed as hating men and never hate men. You don't have to hate men to want them to be a better person. And that but that applies for men and women. So if I meet someone who's even female and they're like, I'm not a feminist. 
I'd still be like, you can do better, Tracy. <laughs> you can do better. And I'd say that to a man as well. It's got nothing to do with your gender or non-gender. Feminist myth number three. Feminism only benefits women. So I guess this myth kind of comes under the same umbrella as feminism is about wanting women to be better than everyone else mm -hmm. uh, rather than wanting them to be equal. And the thing is like feminism benefits everyone uh, because it's not just women's issues that are part of feminism. Intersectional feminism isn't just about the issues that affect cisgender women. It's also about racism and ableism and colorism and ageism mm. and homophobia and transphobia and all other issues. It benefits all genders to talk about these issues and solve them in our society. And that actually includes cisgender men because there's issues like toxic masculinity and men not being able to show their emotions, which is part of patriarchal lessons. And that is what feminism is trying to undo. It's the classic trope of men are, you know, men, boys will be boys and um, strong men are don't cry and going not being able to choose even the career that you want you might get a man who say loves to sew but he feels intimidated by that industry because it's not the stereotypical career for a man breaking down those barriers means that everybody can be themselves without having to worry about what the rest of society is going to think because at the end of the day it's the patriarchal society that puts the pressure on people to not be able to be themselves and to not show their emotions. Yeah, because when you think about toxic masculinity, often the things that are being condemned as men shouldn't do that, it's because those things are traditionally considered to be feminine. Mm -hmm. So showing emotions, having, wearing pink, wearing pink. The reason that they've been demonized as men shouldn't do that is because we're taught that femininity is weakness. And actually, if we realise that there is strength in femininity, femininity shouldn't be demonised in any way, then toxic masculinity wouldn't exist. Iggy Pop said he has um, no shame in wearing a dress because he has no shame in dressing like a woman and being like a woman. Which is why all these issues do come back to feminism and they do come back to how women are treated in our society. So basically to the myth that feminism only benefits women, Feminism benefits everyone. Okay guys, thank you for watching The Gaggle Chats. We'll be back soon with some more feminist talk. Uh, for now, if you want to follow Jolie at The Gaggle on Instagram, I'll link her down below. And yeah, click subscribe if you enjoyed. Bye guys. Bye.